Leadership is an inherent part of human personality and people exhibit this quality in various capabilities. The largest black continent has produced a lot of remarkable African leaders and warriors who had made history and written their names in the books of memories. Before colonialism, the continent of Africa was subdivided into groups and each group had their warrior who mostly was their leader. Most of the African warriors were leaders of other groups commonly known as tribes. They also used to lead their people all time including times of war. The most renowned African leaders and warriors who had lived through history and had achieved remarkable feats in their lifetime include the following notable African leaders. Number 10 Ahmed Baba. His full name was Atu al Abbasamid al Takrui al Masufi al Tinbuxi. He was a leader in the Songhai Empire that ruled approximately two thirds of West Africa. Nowadays, the areas are called Niger, Northern Nigeria, Gambia, Senegal, Guinea, Mauritania, and Mali. The empire collapsed due to the invasion of Europeans and Arab in 1591. All leaders including him were arrested and were taken to Sahara. He later died in 1627. He was also a renowned medieval West African writer, scholar, and political provocateur. Number 9, Almami Sulaku. He was a very powerful ruler who maintained his independence for as long as possible. His kingdom was known as Biraiwa. He became the war captain and made Biraiwa one of the largest in Sierra Leone. Biraiwa became rich as he fostered trade in foodstuffs, hides, ivory and gold. His name has gone down in history as one of the most powerful African leaders. Number 8 Behanzin Hosobawal also known as the King Shark. He was the most powerful king among the West African kings during the last years of 19th century. He was the master of the kingdom he ruled. If he nodded his head. He meant either death or life to his subjects. He overpowered the French expedition in 1890 and made them pay for using the Cotonou port. He was later defeated in 1894 by Colonel A. Dodds who was a Senegalese. European. He had been sent to fight against him and had been provided with very powerful French armed forces. He died in 1906 when he was in Algeria. Number 7 Sechweo Kamband, Zulu King. He was a hero in a war against the British and he caused the biggest defeat which the English men had never had for many of the African leaders that opposed them. When the British invaded Zululand, he defeated them and killed the heir to French throne by the name Prince Napoleon. He was later captured and imprisoned. He died in February 1844. Number 6 is Anna of Aksum. He was the leader of the kingdom by the name Aksumite which was in Eritrea. He succeeded his father who was called El Amida when he was still a child. Izana was the first ruler to embrace Christianity in the kingdom. He established several military campaigns. He also erected several obelisks and struck. Number 5 King Ibrahim Joy and Joyous rule started during the 14th century. He was to become the king of the people of West Cameroon but he was not old enough to lead the people. Even after he matured he could not commence since his father's head was with enemies. According to the tradition of Bamam ancestors, Skulls or heads were of ceremonial importance and so he had to recover his father's head in order to commence. He died at an age of 73. Number 4 Kwame Nkrumah. He became the first Prime Minister of Ghana. He later became the President of the same country. He was an anti-colonialist. Pan-Africanist and trained to be a teacher. Kwame Nkrumah was the founder of Convention People's Party. 
CPP. He was jailed but was later freed when CPP won the 1951 elections in order to form the government. He firmly believed in the liberation of Africans. He formed a one-party state in 1964 and became the president of Ghana. However, Nkrumah was later overthrown by the military in 1966 and lived to die in April 1972. The above are among many other African warriors in the history of Africa. Number 3 Hatshepsut 18th Dynasty Egypt Hatshepsut was one of the greatest rulers of ancient Egypt, being their longest reigning woman pharaoh, the earliest great woman of which history can tell us, and is certainly one of the most famous African warriors. Originally thought to have merely been regent, then the regent, for her stepson and nephew, Thutmose III. After the 1479 BC death of her husband, Thutmose II, she is now accepted to have actually been pharaoh in her own right from at least 1472 BC until her death in 1458 BC. Contemporary records show she definitely was pharaoh in 1472 BC so she must have become so sometime during the previous seven years. During her reign, she greatly increased the wealth of Egypt by establishing trade networks and funding expeditions to far-off lands such as the land of Pont, around the mouth of the Red Sea, and of course, like all pharaohs, commissioned many buildings, monuments and statues. No record has been found of the reason for her death, aged 50, but medical investigations indicate she had bone cancer and diabetes, either of which could have been to blame. After her death, Many of the stone representations of her were defaced by simply chiseling off the features of the face. It was thought this was done by Thutmose III to remove her from the official records in a fit of angry revenge, but it is now thought more likely that it might have been done by his son, Amin Hotep II, to help secure his right to the throne as opposed to any of Hatshepsut's descendants who might have a claim as strong or stronger. Amin Hotep is also known to claim many of her accomplishments for himself. Number 2 Yaqub al-Mansur, Moulay Yaqub, Morocco, Abu Yusuf Yaqub al-Mansur, to give him his full name was the third caliph of the Ahmad dynasty of Moorish rulers of Iberia and succeeded his father, who was murdered in Spain, in 1184. His name, Al-Mansur, means the invincible and he earned it through never losing a battle in all his many military campaigns, and defeating every enemy he had. In fact, by winning all these battles he was able to halt the spread of the Christian faith in the Iberian Peninsula of Europe, at least temporarily. He was also a great patron of the arts, philosophy, the sciences and architecture all flourished during his rule, as did the traders, and he built the great mosque at Granada and Cordova still a famous landmark today. After revenging himself on the Spanish for his father's death, by totally subjugating the country, he went back to Africa, and his Christian subjects in Spain started revolts and recaptured many of the conquered cities. After he came back to Spain and reconquered them all, he took many thousands of the Spanish back to Africa and sold them as slaves. But again, while he was gone, back in Spain they put together another massive army to fight him. This time when he came back he killed about 150,000, half the opposing army, in the Battle of Alarcos on the 18th of July 1195, and afterwards stripped the country of just about everything of any value. 
They didn't try it again. Number one, Shaka Kassens and Kona. Zulu Kingdom. Shaka Kassens and Kona was the greatest leader of the Zulu Kingdom, being influential in the uniting of many of the Nguni people into his Zulu Kingdom and thus creating a nation that ruled over a large portion of southern Africa. He himself was a brilliant statesman and military genius of great vigor whose reign was marked equally for his innovative reforms and his brutality. He was assassinated by two of his half-brothers, Dingane and Malandana, but not on their first attempt. Historians describe him variously as a uniter or a usurper, depending on their preference, and interest in him is such that research into his methods and character still goes on today.